In this video, we'll cover the 120 volt AC system that we installed in our four wheel camper hog shell. We use it mainly for battery maintenance and we pre cool our refrigerator before a trip. Now, before we start, a couple of caveats. First of all, you should ask yourself do you really need a 120 volt system built in? Do you have an adequate solar setup that keeps your battery topped off? Do you have an inexpensive battery trickle charger or maintainer for when you're not traveling? Do you rarely plug in at RV parks or friends' houses to power laptops or a small air conditioner? If not, this system may not be worth the effort and expense for you. I'm glad we did it for the convenience, but I think it's not for everybody. Another reason to avoid this is the slight chance of hitting the frame or wires when cutting a hole for the receptacle. You might remember we hit the frame when cutting a hole for the fresh water inlet. This time we hit some wires that I think were going up to the corner light perhaps as shown here. I'm 0 for 2 on cutting holes and I hate to do it. So if you're still interested, here's a description of our basic 120 volt AC install. This is the 12 volt DC electrical equipment, including fuses and a automatic charge relay. And uh, it's housed in a five inch wide uh, compartment, which was not enough for our AC system or our water tank, which goes in the same vicinity. And this is a picture of the 12 volt setup from the side after the sidewall was taken down. In this picture, you can see the 12 volt gear on the left during the bench expansion work. And in this view from above, you can see how much more room we have for the 120 volt equipment. The gray conduit along the bottom allows us to traverse the electrical compartment with the fresh water line with no risk of any water getting into the electrical area. The black box on the right is the Blue C automatic charging relay. It connects your alternator to the house battery and disconnects it when the house battery is low so that you don't drain your truck battery. We had to turn this component on its side to fit our 120 volt gear in, but it seems to work just fine that way. This video shows the IOTA battery charger on the left and the electrical panel on the right during construction. The battery charger is a IOTA DSL-30A rated for 30 amps. It's the same one that four-wheel camper puts into the full-featured models, or at least I did when we purchased in 2019. The 120-volt circuit breaker panel from Panatronics was just right size for us as it had a circuit for the battery charger, for a two-way refrigerator, and for two outlets in the rear of the camper for general purpose. The drawing helped us figure out how to wire the panel, but the two electricians in the family were a big help also. I really recommend getting some professional help if you're not sure what you're doing with the electrical work. The IOTA converter charger is ideal for a really good battery maintenance because it has four charging stations for a rapid bolt charge stage at about 14.8 volts, an absorption stage, and a float stage, which is about 13.6 volts. It also has an equalization stage, which cycles through all the stages once a week during storage. These stages avoid overcharging and also sulfation during long-term storage. And it's tailored to your battery type by the little green dongle with the green light. Ours is an IQ AGM tailored for our AGM battery. 
Now we'll trace the electrical lines, beginning with the 30 amp receptacle on the back wall of the camper. Its rear is in the battery compartment. You look in the battery compartment, and you can see on the wall up here is the uh, receptacle and the 10 gauge three conductor cable goes down here and out here and into the furnace compartment. From the furnace compartment, it goes through a hole and comes out up there. This is it. It goes into the electrical compartment right here. So if we go around to the electrical compartment, it actually comes in down here, goes along under our conduit and into our into our panel, our 120 volt panel. The panel has breakers for the battery charger, refrigerator, and outlets. And um, this, this first cable here, 16 gauge cable, goes back to outlets by the refrigerator. Uh, this one down here goes over to the IOTA battery charger and, and another one there for outlets in the front cabinet. This is the IOTA battery charger. And these are the outlets in the front of the camper. One final addition was to put in some ventilation with these small side vents and some little spacers under the lid to allow warm air to escape out the top. These are needed because the charger needs some ventilation especially during the bulk charging stage on a hot day. Well, we hope this has been helpful in planning your electrical setup. As I mentioned, not everyone needs a 120 AC hardwired into their camper, especially if you have a good battery and solar setup and maybe a simple battery maintainer with an extension cord. It's just a little more convenient to have it built in. We are interested in your thoughts and suggestions on the 120 volt setup. And please let us know if there are any questions. Next, we'll cover our minor addition to the factory 12 volt system and our solar panel setup. So please subscribe and thanks much for tuning in.